So uh, earlier in this particular module, in one of the segments, we talk about mechanical energy. Do you remember that? What I said was, I have any form of energy and I can directly convert this to mechanical work. Okay? So that is called the mechanical energy. I said mechanical work, but I don't really expand on what mechanical work is. So now I'll expand on it because we will be using this in the first law, which is coming up very quickly. Okay? So let's first talk about the most uh, fundamental uh, version of it. I have point one over here, location one, and I moved an object from here well, to the location there. So what is the work for this particular uh, case? Okay. So that's something you know from physics. I, I, my plan is not to rehash the entire physics, and assuming this is the S direction. Um, F, force on the object. And this force on the object does not have to be constant. It can be a function of the path, okay? Because the, the, the basically force here may not be equal to force there. Who knows, right? This is the most general form. It's going to be ds, right? So the force, again, at this point, you may be saying, oh, it's a little bit off. Well, not really. This is the force, you know, assume that f is constant. So I can take it out. So then I can have, um, actually, why don't I write it? If f is constant because it's a constant uh, f is constant case is fairly common um, do you see what i write because in from the previous segment i said that these are path functions so i cannot write the exact differential this is an inexact differential so i have to abbreviate this way it's going to be f times uh, you know some kind of distance right this is the s the distance so okay so my question is this this is not that off this is uh, force times distance. You knew this from physics. Force times distance is equal to work, right? Yeah, it is it, you know. This is the energy, you know. We may not be very specific about the difference between the energy, the work, etc. But now, you know, I am doing that, okay? So uh, what I'm saying now is this force times distance is the torque that what we used before, right? In solid mechanics process. So this is what we have. And if I'm interested in the power, then, well, fairly simple because I introduced the similar things before. This is gonna be an exact differential of work divided by some kind of distance that, uh, you know, when I, if I wanna go to ds, then the time it takes for me to take this object in a ds distance will be dt, you know. Okay, so this is gonna be f times ds by dt. Okay, wait a second, f is constant, so f ds by dt. So, what is ds by dt? Well, the distance the, uh, traveled uh, divided by the time it takes to travel that distance is called the velocity, right? Velocity. So, okay, this power is equal to force times the velocity, okay? V. So, you see, you knew this. Well, I'm assuming you knew this. Force times velocity is the power, okay? And you can look at the units as well. So, you know, let's, uh, you know, I did this many times, but I'll just for a good measure, I'll write it in here. This is the watts or B2 per hour is what I will be, you know, using in terms of the British gravitational and SI, irrespectively over here. First is SI, the second is British gravitational, okay? Um, so this is what I have over here, okay? Um, well, why don't, you know, like the way that I started was, uh, I was taking the constant force case, but it doesn't have to be constant. So if, if encounter, then I'll have, you know, the verb will be from point 0.1 to point 0.2, f times v times dt. So, you know, because if you think about this, assuming f is v, f and v is constant, so you can take it out, f times v is what? Well, literally what, right? Yeah. Um, times the time. And this is what times, well, let's write it. What is what time? Second. Joule. Again, I'm just going over this like 25 times because I want you to not confuse this, okay? What's times S is joules. Or if we don't want to be confused about it, you know, just stick to this. It's the same thing, right? Watts is equal to joule per second. Okay, that's the first thing I want to talk about. And we are going to deal with it, uh, you know, fairly often. Spring work. Sometimes we deal with this too in thermodynamics because you will see I will, you know, introduce a detailed uh, system called piston cylinder system and sometimes we connect that to a, 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 a spring okay and I mean again if you're a mechanical this is nothing new to you but I have a let's say the resting position of this particular uh, spring and I pull this right if I pull this I will go to another you know, like it will be my drawing is not good at all but 
I think you're seeing what is uh, I'm doing now. So I'm like pulling it down and it's going to go in this distance, right? Uh, so this will be the x direction I have. So, okay, um, it's kind of like a common knowledge that you guys know this, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, you know, force that I have over here is equal to spring constants times x. And the spring constant that I have, units wise, it's going to be Newton per meter because it has to be, you know, a unit, unit uh, should be homogeneous, right? Or pound force divided by foot, okay? That is the unit of the k. And then, this is my force. Wait a second, where is it up there, right? Uh, why don't I do, where is it? Uh, right here. Force times the, you know, the S. I call this S this time, but now I'm calling S, so this is going to F of X times DX, right? So let's do it, because I may need to, you know, tap into that. The work that I have will be basically F DX, okay? And F is what? From up here. It's going to kx, right? So it's going to be from 1 to 2. It will be from, let's be more specific, x1 to x2, so I can x1 to x2 because x is the variable there. So kx dx, and that will be k is constant, I'm assuming. So it will be out of the integral. Then I'm going to have x squared by 2, right? And I x1 to x2. And if I rewrite this over here, I don't want to go to the next page because then it will be harder when I teach in class. It's going to be k by 2 x2 squared minus x1 squared, okay? So this will be the spring fork that I'm gonna have to deal with, okay? If you're interested in the power, it's very similar to the way that I did, I'm not gonna repeat myself, okay? The next thing that I wanna do is my, my friends, my students from electrical engineering is taking it and they're saying, whoa, you keep talking about mechanical, what about us, what about us? There we go, we are right over here, okay? V, voltage. It's so much fun, right, when we use V as like velocity, voltage, volume, specific volume, right? Oh, it's a lot of fun. I is the current, okay? So I am a mechanical engineer. I'm not going to pretend, uh, you know, I'm sure my friends from electrical may know more about this. But I, whenever I see this, I always convert this to the mechanical equivalent of a voltage. The mechanical equivalent of a voltage is force. Mechanical equivalent of a current is velocity. Oh, isn't this fun? Ooh, ooh, fun. Very, very fun. Okay, so you need to know what which domain you're at. Are you in this domain, right? Or are you I'm in this domain? So this is the electrical domain, this is the mechanical domain. Okay, and it's not going to come to you as a surprise. Let's say W dot. What did I say about W dot in terms of the mechanical version of it? F times V, right? Well, V times I, right? So, yep, V times I. So this is the power. Okay. And if I'm interested in the work, not the power, then I have to do exactly what I did up there, um, V, I, T, T, okay? And you have to take, uh, worry about this. Sometimes we have to deal with it, so I, I just wanted you to be cognizant of this, okay? Another version of the uh, mechanical work, which uh, really flies into the mechanical domain of things, is this. Okay, let me draw a shaft and I'll be right back because I don't want to be embarrassed in front of everybody. Okay, I'm back. I said I don't want to be embarrassed, but this is pretty bad, embarrassing to be honest with you, but whatever. So what I want to use is a, a physics that we know is torque is force times r. I'm sure you remember this. If not, it's a reminder to you. So the torque that I obtain is the force times the distance, the, 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 the radius that I have, okay? And let's say that this is rotating, right? That's the whole point of a shaft work because Remember what I said? I have a turbine and the turbine is going to have a shaft. Shaft, it's going to convert to rotating this and then I'm going to convert this to electrical work. It's called the generator. So shaft work convert to the electrical work, it's called the generator. And we typically, you know, kind of like uh, goes together. So I have a turbine outside then I kind of connect it to the uh, generator. It converts to electrical work so I can use it for uh, better purposes. You see, my friends from electrical, I said good things about you now. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's look at the distance that this shaft travels. Uh, why am I doing the distance uh, that the shaft travels? The shaft travels because, well, I'm trying to do the same thing that I did here. Force times the distance. So I'm interested in this distance, okay? That's the goal that I have over here. So let's look at the distance. So that's going to be 2 pi r. So this will be the circumference or pi d of this whole shaft, right? But then I'm not going to turn it once and then stop. Maybe I'm be turning it, you know, revolutions, right? How many times am I turning it? 
I'm gonna call this an n. n is the revolutions. How many times does it complete that 2 pi r? If it completes it 10 times, then you're gonna multiply 2 pi r times 10, okay? And as I dis discussed, uh, you know, force times distance is w, right, work. Um, and then if we do shaft work, more specific, f. So can I simply go ahead and call this, you know, the torque divided by radius is f? Sure, why not? It's my choice. Why am I doing it? I don't have to do it. I can simply find force of the, you know, this equation by dividing, but you'll see r's will cancel, cancel, so that was the goal. 2 pi r n times the revolution, so these cancel, so you can see here, 2 pi t n is my shaft work, and this is going to be in joule or BTU, right, SI, BG, pair. What about, uh, you know, power, maybe I'm interested in power, then I'm going to take the derivative of that, which is with time, so 2 pi is not going to change, torque is constant, so I'm going to call this n dot. Okay, so it's revolutions per time. You remember we have revolutions per second, etc. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's what I'm gonna have over here. So that pretty much sums it up. So I'm now ready to have some fun with the um, uh, first law. So don't feel good about it when a professor says I'm gonna have fun. That you know the ending never is good. Okay. All right, I'll be back soon. Thank you.